Hello, and welcome to Bolt Action Reloading. If you're interested in my attempt to start using Scott Satterley's 10-shot load development technique with the Hornady 130 grain ELD match and Alliant Reloader 26, stick around. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you want to see how I and the rest of the community here make our group smaller, start now by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon. That way you get notified when I post new videos and you won't miss anything. Now guys, if you haven't seen the video in this series, I'll put a card up so you can go check it out. The first video in the series will go into a little bit more detail about this technique and why we're doing exactly what we're doing. So if you'd like this video to make a little more sense, you may want to go back and watch it, but feel free to stick around if you like and watch it later. So for risk of sounding silly, I'm going to start off this video by telling you that I thought about not actually even putting out a certain section of these videos. Full disclosure that the velocity curves that we're going to be discussing today were generated on fire forming brass. As we've shown in one of the previous videos, it seems that the curves are better generated on brass that has been previously fired and having your standard reloading process performed on them. Which is for me, full length size, trim to length, primer pocket uniformed, if those are all the things that you're going to do. However, I did watch a video on Ultimate Loader, aka Gavin Tube, where that seemed to be exactly what he was doing, so I thought that I would not hide my data from the audience here either. I'm unsure how much of this data I will use or regenerate, but here it is for your thoughts and review. And full disclosure, I'm actually going to use a little bit of it in a video in the not too distant future. So guys, like we always do, let's talk about the load details. Starting off with our brass, this was actually Starline Large Rifle Primer Brass. The projectile we're using is the Hornady 130 grain ELD match, part number 26177. The primer is a CCI 250 Large Rifle Magnum Primer. The powder we are using is Alliant Reloader 26 loaded from 47.3 grains all the way to 49.7 grains in 0.1 grain increments. The cartridge overall length that I decided to load these to is 2.840 inches. For us going into too much detail, let's talk for two seconds about this technique and how it's actually used. Basically, this is loosely based the 6.5 guys video that they did with Scott Satterley. The chart that I put on the screen now is generated from data that they gave in their video talking about actually finding plateaus essentially where you could change the charge weight without actually affecting the velocity. So essentially, you're a velocity node. And what you're hoping, an accuracy node. So in our graph today, this is exactly what we're looking for. That was their chart, and here's ours. Now, as with everything in life, guys, reality is never really as pretty as everything you see on television, but we'll still do the best we can with this. Now, I should have mentioned before, the actual charge weights that we selected for this were based on charges from Berger's website for their 135 grain Classic Hunter. We've shot some loads with it in the past, we've seen some amazing velocities, and since the projectile weight in this particular projectile is so close, we thought we'd give it a try here and see what velocities we actually reached in this case. So guys, feel free to look at the chart any way you like. This is exactly what it is. Looking at it real quick, my quick analysis is going to say that if I was looking for plateaus in this particular graph, I'm looking somewhere around 47.4 grains, 47.9 grains, 48.5 grains, 49.2 grains, and 49.5 grains. If you, and if you guys have any opinions on that subject, please leave those in the comments below. And because I think some of you guys like to see it, here's a very abbreviated summary of the actual shooting from today's loads. So guys, interesting as may be, the overall group on that entire group is 1.979 MOA. Since this load data is actually based on the Berger 135 grain Classic Hunter, in this case we really don't have specific data to know where we are as far as pressure. Maybe we're a little bit too low, maybe we're a little bit too hot, but you guys decide. This is simply the data that I generated and how I did it. Speaking of that, let's take a quick look at the brass. So if you can see as we go from 47.3 grains all the way to the 47.9 grains, the primers do tend to get a little bit flatter, however, there's really no pressure signs on here at all, not an ejector mark, no hard bolt lifts. I do really feel all the loads we shot here were perfectly safe in my rifle and really didn't show any extended pressure signs. So there you have it. I'd really love to hear from you what data do you really feel is missing from this information before we can move forward. If you've actually tried this combination, I would love to hear from you in the comments section below. There'll be a couple more videos where we're going to discuss these graphs while fireforming our breasts, I'll try and disclose the same as I did in this video. You will have to decide for yourself if you believe that it's relevant or not. 
So if you guys will probably figure out a similar load work was probably coming here somewhere down the road on the channel. We may actually duplicate this with a different projectile of the same weight and see if the nodes are actually in the same places or if they move around. At the end of the day, it's all about identifying an accurate load for our rifle as quickly and efficiently as we possibly can. We may also touch a little bit more on primer selection, neck tension settings, and any more good ideas that are brought up from the audience here on the channel. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video and found it informative. If not, kindly leave a comment and tell me why. Or if you have any questions or comments on the video, please put those in the comments section below. If you're not subscribed to the channel and you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel and hit the like button. Like always, until next week, stay safe in small groups.